I have finished a lot of things and I'm still working on a lot of things, so there's loads of things to talk to you about. Help, 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 help. I'm dropping, no. I'm dropping stitches. Look how cute these are, these little earrings. They're strawberries, oh my god. Hi, my name is Lisa and welcome back to a new video here on my channel. I usually make knitting and crochet videos here and if you've never watched any podcasts of me before, welcome! I'm gonna do a knitting podcast today again because I have finished quite some things and yeah, I feel like there's still a lot of things that I can talk to you about, about all the stuff that I'm working on and finishing up and yeah, winter is coming so grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever drink you like and knit along with me or do whatever else uh, you want to do and have you seen you cannot really see it but i bought oh, an advent calendar last week here in france they had way more choices for advent calendars than in the netherlands so I bought this one because I thought, first of all, it looks pretty and Toblerone is one of my favorite types of chocolate. So I can't wait for December to start just for this. In general, uh, time is flying by so quickly. For those of you who do not know, I am currently on an exchange semester in France, in Grenoble, in the French Alps. And time is flying by, really. I will stay here till the end of January, so that's about two more months, and my semester is coming to an end in a couple weeks already, so uh, yeah, that's a bit scary. But anyways, I'm still knitting a lot, and I cannot wait to talk with you about what I have finished and what I'm working on at the moment. Let me start, first of all, with what I am wearing right now. On my Instagram, I've already shared it a couple times, and Honestly, I have been living in this thing. It is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit and it's just incredibly cozy and warm and it basically fits with everything and it, yeah, I really like it a lot and I'm wearing it multiple times a week, honestly, because I didn't bring that many sweaters with me anyways to France, so I'm wearing this one really, really a lot. <laughs> like I said, it's a zipper sweater by Petite Knit. The yarn I use is Peruvian Highland Wool, a Fucolana. Yeah, a, a, the yarn I use is Fucolana Peruvian Highland Wool and Fucolana Tilia, both in the colors green tea. And oh, the color is something I love a lot. I don't have any other item in my wardrobe, I think, in this uh, specific color. and. I really like it. It's autumnal, but I can totally see this also in spring and basically all year round. And it's just really, really cozy, so I'm super, super in love with this thing. It did use a few techniques that I'd never used before, like installing the zipper. It was a bit of a challenge and not sure if I am incredibly happy with the way I did it. You can kind of see that it's a bit wonky down here especially. But it was not as complicated as I thought, at least. The, there is a video in the pattern that is really well like, well done and explains everything in a pretty uncomplicated manner, I'd say. <laughs> and I used the zipper also from Petite Knit um, herself. I bought it online and uh, yeah, it got delivered here. <laughs> and I'm not sure, like, I think you could have used any zipper, but since I couldn't find a good zipper here in Grenoble, I decided to just order it online from her and I think it was about six, six euros the zipper, so that's also kind of okay-ish um, price-wise. The yarn for this one was pretty expensive though, I think in the end it came about a little bit less than 100 euros, which I still think is a lot for yarn, but considering I've been wearing this sweater so much already and I'm loving it a lot, I think it's totally worth it to invest sometimes in some nice mohair and wool combination <laughs> sweater but yeah it's really cozy and really amazing i like it a lot it is a bit warm though so not sure like here it's it's pretty cold and also with the energy prices i'm trying to uh, not put on the heating <laughs> a lot so i'm wearing it a lot and i do really like about the zipper part that if it's gets too hot, hot that I can like unzip it a bit and that way you can really regulate the temperature a lot. I was scared in the beginning that 
I would find it maybe a little bit itchy or anything, but it's not at all. Like I am wearing wearing a short sh short sleeve t-shirt underneath it now, because without I think it's a bit itchy maybe, but it's not no it's not really itchy in any other other way it's just that it's that i don't really like having wool directly against my skin in like the uh, around my shoulder and stuff but for the arms and everything else it's totally fine and for the neck as well it's like a little scarf almost with this high color um thing <laughs> and yeah i think that this one i will wear so much still and very happy that i decided to finally make it and I have been wearing it also a couple times already on hikes because that's what the zipper is very convenient for as well and it's just in general a very warm sweater and even with wind it's uh, it's really holding up really, very well oh, I see there is some dirt on my shoulder actually yeah I have been wearing this one a lot like I said a couple times a week already and I haven't washed it since blocking it so not sure like I'm I never wash my knits very often because especially if it's 100% wool like this one it's not smelling bad it feels clean still so let me know in the comments how often you wash your knits because I'm pretty curious to know about that I just always think that it's such a big hassle like I I hand wash them especially here because the laundry situation in the residence I'm living in is absolutely horrible and I don't even think there is a special wool program on the washing machines here, so I would never throw it in the machine here. And I would hand wash it instead. But hand washing just takes so long to dry and it's such a big thing that I end up not washing my knits that often. But let me know <laughs> how often you wash your knits and your sweaters and how many times you wear it before washing. Uh, I think that I can still wear it like quite a lot more before I have to, to wash it, honestly. Yeah, no, doesn't smell bad at all and I've really worn it a lot, but I think that's just the material and that's something that I really love about na natural uh, fibers like wool and uh, mohair, that they do not keep in any, any smells or anything like that. So this sweater, I it took me... how long have I been working on it? I think I started in September, so and I finished it around the end of October. So it took me about two months working on it and I did have this whole situation where we had like a bed bug scare and I had to put it in the freezer because I took this with me on the trip to Marseille where we... I never, I didn't end up having bed bugs but um, someone that we were traveling with in another room in the same hotel got them so just out of prevention we washed everything at 60 degrees and this of course I couldn't wash at that temperature and also it was still like on the needles and everything so I put it in the freezer for a week and <laughs> that's why it maybe took me a little bit longer to finish it but in the end it's alright and all fine and I like the cut cut a lot it's cozy and oversized the sleeves are really really long so I can easily roll them up and it happened already a few times that I was on my bike wearing this and I forgot to take gloves oh there's a squirrel in the tree over there there's so many squirrels around here okay <laughs> and then I didn't take gloves with me and I just rolled down the sweater and use it use it kind of as gloves and that was amazing so I love very long sleeves for this and very happy I decided to make this one um, eventually I'm gonna wear it a lot more and feels like the perfect sweater for this city and this like active mountain type of life I'm living here. <laughs> then let's get to my other finished objects. They are a bit more random I'd say, but the first one is it's this thing. You might be wondering what on earth this is because it looks chaotic and messy and that's also what it is. But this is my Halloween costume that I crocheted very last minute in like one or two nights I did this. I had a Halloween party here and of course since I am an Erasmus exchange student I do not have any costumes or anything here with me and I also didn't really want to buy a full-on costume and I still had quite some white yarn and uh, used that to make like a spider web type of thing that I put over my shoulders. Here are a few pictures of me wearing 
this costume thingy. Yeah, I just used a YouTube tutorial, I will link it in the description, that showed how to make these spider webs and then connected them and kind of like randomly... Oh my god, why is this red on here? <laughs> I think there's like my lipstick that I was wearing that night that is on the on this thing now as well. <laughs> yeah, not sure what I would do with it now, like... Maybe I'll take it home with me, maybe I'll donate it um, here to like the gratuiterie that they do in the end where they give it to students who are gonna study here next semester then someone has like a cool costume. But <laughs> I'll see what I will end up doing with it. I just added some fake spiders in the webs like here and I had like a headband with the spider on it and pretty cool and the reason why I ended using this yarn, the yarn I used for it, I think is either Drops, no, not Drops North, Drops, either Drops Alaska or Drops Nepal. I think it's Drops Alaska that they use for it. I took it with me because I originally wanted to make a sweater vest, but then I found out that the whites were from were from completely different dye lots, so the white looks very different, and that's why I didn't mind uh, sacrificing it for this weird Halloween <laughs> costume thingy. Because yeah, one white is much more yellow, and the other one is much whiter, and it is the same color. It's just from a different dye lot, so nothing really that you can do about that. But in a sweater vest, I think it would have really annoyed me a lot that the the colors would be slightly different. But in this totally fine and I had quite a lot of fun making this it was a free handing project and I don't do that very often I just in general don't crochet that often anymore and uh, yeah it was fun to work on a crochet project and just do whatever and it's a spider web so it could be very messy and I also made these two little gloves with it as well let me see if I can try one on and, and show you yeah like a little spider web glove that I made as well. It's the same construction. I just made a spider web that made like a little thing to chain around my wrist and put the finger, like the thumb and the middle finger hole thing. And I had these little gloves on and uh, it was a cute little last minute costume and feels good to make stuff like that yourself and not buy some cheap plastic costume thingy that will probably look ugly anyways and yeah little random spider web thingy <laughs> feels weird to have this as a as a finished object but it was very really fun making it and let's stay into the realm of costumes and stuff like that because i have another costume kind of thing that i made it's this i mean this is incredible and i still think it's so 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 cute it is this little raspberry, no, a uh, strawberry beret. I cannot really, I mean, I can kind of put it on, but my hair right now is not the most fitted for this beret uh, thingy, but you've seen it already on my Instagram. And I'll, in again, include a lot of photos of me wearing the actual costume, but this beret actually had been on my list for a while to make. And it is the, let me look up the pattern name, it's like the f fruity, fruity, cutesy crochet beret, but the artist I kind of forget. Uh, yeah, it's by Doe and Deer, Shop Doe and Deer on Etsy. I bought it um, from there. And the yarn I used was again yarn I still had with me. It is Drops Alaska, the red yarn. The white is also Drops Alaska. And this, I think, is Drops Nepal, the, um, the green little leaves on there and it's just so cute this thing i think honestly i might be even gonna wear i might even go and wear this in my normal life since it's just the cutest thing ever this beret and i mean it is a costume but mm, <laughs> because the reason i made this costume was because a friend of mine here was throwing a birthday party where you had to go dress as something that also started with an S, so that's why I decided to go as a strawberry. And it was just a perfect excuse to make this thing that had been on my list for a while and so cute. I was kind of mad because at home I have even more strawberry themed crocheted things. I have a little bag, I actually already once made a, a crochet hat but it's very big and 
not that flattering and I made it as like a second crochet project ever. So I had a lot of strawberry stuff at home already, but here I had my strawberry socks that I wore. I had I have Crocs with strawberry on strawberries on the note, so I wore that as well. I have these fairy lights with strawberries, so I managed to have a full-on strawberry costume anyways, but this beret was really stealing the show. It was just so cute and yeah, I made it. it it's 100% wool, so it's pretty warm as well. So I might actually just wear it in winter and be a little strawberry. That's just way too cute. Very nice. And the pattern was very easy to follow. Perfect beginner project, I'd say, for crocheting. Um, and I might even end up crocheting like a beret again that's not strawberry themed like a normal beret with the same pattern since it's just a basic beret shape pattern and to go with the beret in terms of the strawberries I also made these are so cute as well a little strawberry earrings they are incredibly cute I just crocheted the little strawberries they were from a free pattern on either YouTube or a blog I'm not entirely sure anymore but I will look it up and put it in the description and they are just very, very cute again. And I used some random acrylic yarn that I found here in the shop, in the supermarket actually, in Casino. And the little green is from a green sock yarn, I think I still had in my stash here. So I crocheted these little strawberries and then just put them on hoop earrings that I already had. Um, like maybe an easy life hack thingy if you're ever crocheting earrings for a little party and it was so nice making something like this again where you use uh, stuffing because I could actually use all my little yarn scraps that I had here before and use them as stuffing which was perfect and uh, yeah I really like when it comes to like a full circle moment where your waist becomes useful again to stuff little strawberries <laughs> basically <laughs> And again, I kind of these making these costumes kind of made me fall in love with crochet again and how it's so quick to make something cute and you can make whatever shape you want basically. Lately, yeah, I I still always start my videos saying that I do crochet and knitting videos. I'm more of a knitter. I think I've said this before. I identify more as a knitter than as a crocheter. It's because I learned knitting first and then learned how to crochet. And in terms of garments, like sweaters and things like that, I really prefer the look of knitting over the look of crocheting, for myself at least, and also the feel. But what I love about crochet is that you can make whatever you want, you can be so creative with it. In terms of color work, it's very fun. Like I've been wearing my cottagecore scarf a lot again, and that just brings me so much joy. And that's something that I really, really like about crochet over knitting. Although, with my cottagecore scarf, I think I might, like when I'm back home in the Netherlands, I might want to try and make a knitted version of it as well. And just in general, I want to make an updated one with more designs, uh, color work designs for squares and stuff. But that's something for later when I'm back home again and when I have all that yarn um, again that I use for that. But yeah, so that's it for like the second little costume. Thingy. Never thought I would have a knitting podcast with two costumes in it, but very cute and so much fun to make and no prep. Like, it's so nice to make stuff for a costume that you don't... Well, maybe I'll wear the beret in my daily life as well, but in general it's so nice to have the freedom to make whatever you want and go as crazy as you want and not have to think about a lot of practicality and whether you will actually wear it a lot and... Yeah, very, very fun and also nice to use stuff that was already in my stash. Uh, pretty much, yeah, all the yarn for this was already in my stash here and I need to get through my stash that I have here, but I'll talk about that a bit more <laughs> later. And then my very last finished object is one that I finished this week, so very recently. And I am in love with it. It's so incredibly pretty and that is this beanie let me see this beanie it is the 
cabled winter hat or cabled winter beanie by Strike Sofa. I think it's a Scandinavian designer. I had never made any pattern from them before, but I found a found it online and I just thought it was incredibly pretty. So uh, when I bought yarn at a local yarn shop here, I bought this yarn. It's mm, I forgot what one of them is at least. Midnight Sol by Snefnook, I think. And the other one, I'll look up what it is, but this color is just so pretty, this rusty color. my I have a winter coat kind of in this color as well, so it will be totally matching and very, very pretty. And I used two strands of mohair, one strand of the wool together. Thing is that hitting gauge was a bit difficult because I wanted to really use two strands of mohair and one strand of wool and my gauge was way off and this pattern is again constructed in a way where the different sizes are based on also different needle sizes and also different stitch counts so it was a bit complicated trying to switch it up but what I ended up doing was I knitted the... I think I knitted the smallest size or one above. I needed either the baby or the kid size because I was using way bigger needles and my gauge was like it was way bigger. So I did some calculations like that and I ended up knitting on five millimeter needles instead of I think 3.5 is oh my god. Again there's all sorts of things flying through the air <laughs> right now. <laughs> but I ended up using five millimeter needles and uh yeah, knitting the baby's size and then making a lot of amendments and measuring it and I think in terms of size I really made the right decision now it's pretty much perfect and I love the cabled look on beanies I think it's just so pretty and uh, knitting cables is very fun as well so yeah I'm very happy that I finished it up actually in the train to back from Geneva. I was in Geneva last weekend and I finished it coming back from there and uh, really really pretty. I like it a lot and I love also twisted rib. This sweater has twisted rib as well and this one also has twisted rib in the... what, what do you call it? Like the folded... the brim. Yeah, the brim of the... of the beanie. <laughs> And the, the types of cables to knit were pretty easy, very beautiful, and I love the way that the yarn turns out, that like you can really see the different types of colors that are in this combination of mohair and normal wool, and I just think it's so pretty. And uh, I really needed a hat as well, since I bought brought one hat with me here, which is pretty cute and nice, but it's made in, in an acrylic, so it's not that warm. And now that it's getting a bit colder, and especially when, when I'm in the mountains on a hike or things, I just need a hat to keep my ears warm. And that's why I love that this one has a super long brim that you uh, fold over. And uh, I really love that it's gonna keep me warm very much and the cable look I think it's just so classic and uh, the perfect winter type of feel it has to it I love it it's also very it feels kind of nostalgic these cable knits I love knitting cables actually I really want to do a sweater with cables maybe when I get back home maybe I'll start on sweater number 15 by my favorite thing knitwear since it has cables all over also, lately, it was Kuto Vakika who published a super beautiful cable sweater uh, that I also would love to make. So, yeah, knitting a cable sweater is also very high on the list now that I've made this cabled beanie and really like the look of it a lot. And it, the thing with cable knits is that it looks so impressive immediately. And it's not that complicated, but it looks very, very pretty and like you made a lot of effort and uh, yeah I like it a lot and the thing is I knitted this completely in English style knitting because I am someone that mixes it, mixes it up continental or English style knitting and this I knitted completely in English style knitting because I had to mix so much between purling and knitting and it also made me kind of feel, fell, fell in love again with English style knitting and 
how much I like that. Uh, my mom taught me how to knit English style and then later I learned Continental myself and uh, Continental is still my preferred style when I'm just doing a lot of knit rows, um, a lot of, especially a lot of stockinette stitch. But I also really like English style knitting and isn't it great that we have so many options <laughs> for knitting and knitting styles. But love making this one. Took me, I'd say, about a week or two to make it. It was a 5mm needle, so pretty quickly for a garment this small. Uh, the main problem was just figuring out the exact gauge and the size that would work for me. But very, very happy with it. Like I said, right now I cannot really <laughs> put, put it on because I'm wearing my hair in a little bun. But uh, by now I think you've already seen mm, these things of me in the screen wearing it later when I have taken out my bun on my head. So pretty, this very much in love with it. I love with knitting podcasts that I'm always thinking more and being more aware about the stuff that I've made and also appreciating appreciating it a lot more because you take the time to look at your knits and think of the hard work you put in it and how every single stitch that I see right now has been made by me and uh, yeah lately I've been enjoying wearing my knits so much and I'm truly enjoying it so much more than wearing any store-bought store um, item and this is also just nice because I bought the yarn here in Grenoble and I will probably forever associate this with my time here and these nature surroundings that I have here, beautiful mountains yeah maybe I will, I will wear it tonight, I'm going to uh, the movies and maybe a Christmas market tonight so could be a nice occasion to wear it so that's it for all of the finished objects. Now, time to go through all of my whips. Let's start with my first major whip that I am working on the most right now, I'd say. I don't have that many whips at the moment. I think I am wor actively working on two, maybe three, but two. Um, but my main whip and one... Oh no, did I drop a stitch? No. No, I don't think I dropped one, right? No. My main whip that I'm working on and one that I cannot wait to finish, but it's still a pretty long way to go. And that is... Ta -ta -ta. Wow! Oh wait, this is the back. This is the front. It is my Ingrid sweater. Look how gorgeous it is looking. Oh, I cannot wait to finish this one and wear it a lot. I hope I'll be save it, still be able to finish it before the end of my semester here, but I'm not too sure about that, honestly, because it's taking pretty long. It is the Ingrid, Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit, and I started this a while ago already, like maybe a month or a month and a half ago, and it's going pretty slow, but I'm enjoying it a lot. The th reason why it's pro going pretty slow is because it's on 4mm needles, which you might think it's pretty big, but on a sweater this large, takes quite long to work on it. And the other reason why it's very, very slow is because it's a pattern with a lot of structure to it. And that means, uh, at least for me, no continental knitting. And that also means that I'm going way slower. <laughs> but I am enjoying the different structures so much. This is always my favorite part, the little waffle kind of pattern that it's creating that is creating and it's just such a fun pattern to work on the yarn i'm using is again fucolana this is uh, fucolana pernilla and uh, this is knitting for olive mohair and both are in the colors marzipan or something like that and it is this kind of white grayish color and i cannot wait to have this sweater in the end the reason why I chose this color is because I wanted a new like staple white basic sweater that could go with anything, with jeans, with maybe a dress, with yeah, with anything basically. And uh, I'm very happy that I chose this pattern for it because I think it's going to be a very good staple piece with a lot of structure to it that is basic because of the, the white color but still very very versatile and um, and like unique because of the 
different structures going on. It's not difficult to, to work on it. I expected that it would be maybe because of all the different stitches and there were a few that I have never done before. Like I, in general, I don't do a lot of moss stitch. I don't do that many. The way that this um, waffle type of structure is made is by using not real cables, but like a kind of cable technique. And I expected that maybe I, it would be difficult but it's actually not at all and I'm really really enjoying it and sometimes it does just take a bit long like this part for example the ribbing here 2x2 two two ribbing I think yeah 2x2 two two ribbing takes very very long because you have to do like I don't know 30 rows or something of that and the body in general of sweaters just takes so long and that's where sometimes I lose a bit of my motivation and my knitting mojo but I'm trying to work on it a lot so I can finish it a bit uh, faster and I do really really like working on it. I did in a, made one mistake when picking up the stitches, I picked up the wrong amount of stitches so I had to unravel the shoulder part and then do that again which is always incredibly annoying when you do something like that. Um, for petite knit patterns, uh, patterns I usually knit it in a small, I knit this one in a small as well and this one I'm knitting in a small as well. I think I could go for an extra small because in general maybe my gauge is a bit uh, loose but I don't really think so. I think in general her patterns are pretty big and also I myself vary a lot in sizes so it's difficult to, um, to estimate. The thing with my body type is that I'm pretty narrow, like I have pretty narrow shoulders and just a bit petite in that way but my bust circumference is a bit bigger so uh, I need to think about that and that's why usually I go for a small or a medium and with petite knit I think small is usually okay for me and I like my stuff like this one a bit to be a bit oversized and also with this one I wouldn't want it to be too tight I think in general my sweaters I like them to be cozy and big and not restraining and super tight um, in any way <laughs> but this one enjoying it a lot very fun to knit and I'm also super curious how it will look after blocking because with all those different structures going on you can see that for example the ribbing um, part it's of course a bit more cinching and I'm curious to see if after blocking it will all be straight and like a bit more even but yeah still quite a long way to go before I can block this this is the, the way it's not raglan that's also funny to not work like the previous sweaters that I've been working on and even cardigans were all in raglan style which I really like a lot to knit but this one is not and also pretty nice and the only thing is that picking up the stitches for the sleeve is gonna be very annoying because I don't like doing that at all but but that's just something I think I'm um, gonna have to live with <laughs> very very pretty in general cannot wait to see the finished results so I need to keep working on this with a bit of tempo. <laughs> then my second whip has everything to do with trying to finish stuff in my stash here and trying to make most of all the yarn that I already have and also working hard to finish it so I don't take a lot of yarn back with me to the Netherlands at the end of January. But that is this one. I It's not that big yet because I started on it um, a couple days ago and then worked on it for one night for some time and then uh, stop but it is this yeah you cannot really see it that well it is uh, gonna be a headband and as you can see it's in the same colors and yarn as my sweater that I'm wearing right now after finishing the zipper sweater I had uh, about a little bit less than one ball and a little bit less of a little bit less than one ball one skein of both yarns left and I found um, this really cute, I mean, I, no, it's not that I, <laughs> I wanted to have a headband since it's cold here and I'm sometimes wearing, like right now, I'm wearing a bun or a top knot or a ponytail or whatever that doesn't allow me to wear a beanie. And that's why I wanted to have a little headband and of course, why not knit one yourself? So I looked online to find cute patterns. There are so many free headband patterns online and I found this one. Let me again look up what the name of it is because of course I didn't do that beforehand. Um, let's see what the name is. Ah, 
Yeah, it's called the Iris he Iris Headband by Mirella Moments, Mireya Moments, something like that. It's a free pattern online, and I thought it looked very cute, and it looked uh, and it was using some fun stitches. So I decided to start working on that with the yarn that I had left, and I think it's going to be a pretty quick project, and it's also very easy to knit. Perfect beginner project. It even says in the pattern that your gauge doesn't have to be perfect since it's like a measurement based one. And since I really like the color of my zipper sweater, I decided to, why not, use that yarn uh, that I have left to make a cute little headband. And could also this could also be like the perfect Christmas gift, I feel like, since you can knit it up in a couple of days. Yeah, I really wanted to do a knitted headband. I had seen quite a lot of crochet ones online that also look very beautiful. But considering that I have like this amount of yarn left, I felt like knitting would be smarter since I'd be less likely to run out of yarn before the end of the headband, before finishing it. Now that I'm holding this in my hand, it also is my reminder that I need to pick this up again and continue it, since it would be nice to have the headband and to actually be able to wear it, since I really would like a headband in my life. <laughs> and it could keep my ears warm and fun to try out like a new type of project, since I have not knitted any headbands before. And it's always nice to then use a free pattern for that, since if you don't like it that much, you can always stop it and choose something else. But this one I'm really liking a lot. And I saw that on her website, she has like had like a lot of other knitted headbands patterns and probably loads of other free patterns as well. So that's really amazing. I always think that creators that make a lot of free patterns are very admirable and uh, great for beginner knitters as well to get to know a bit what type of patterns you like. And that's the headband <laughs> story. <laughs> And my very last whip that I'm actively working on, or actually I have not really been working on it a lot in the past few weeks, but before that a bit, and that is a pair of socks. Let me show you. It's these socks. I started these long ago, like, I don't know, two, two months ago maybe. And I kind of forgot the pattern name, so I will search for it again yeah they are the laid edges socks it's a free pattern i think online and i think that it's a very fun one to knit it's using a technique where you slip stitches and then yarn over and well, a bit difficult to explain but it's not difficult to do at all and it looks pretty fancy and perfect way to spice up a basic sock design and the yarn I am using for this it is maybe you recognize the color already but it is the yarn that I dyed using avocados that I made a video about um, a while back like when I was still living in my Amsterdam apartment and it is very pretty the color it's a bit difficult to show on screen what type of color it actually is and also it's starting to become dark why it's one o'clock <laughs> but it's very pretty and I think for a pair of socks it could be very beautiful and um, perfect autumnal type of color the problem with my sock knitting is that now also when I'm seeing this I need to continue working on this sock because I haven't touched it in it must be over a month that I haven't uh, worked on this sock I'm a bit out of my sock knitting Mm, excitement and motivation. I think that this year I've knitted so many socks and I really really liked working on those but now I'm a bit over it and I'm more in a sweater knitting type of phase and hats and things like that but I still love sock knitting so much. It's just that I have a lot of knitted socks so I don't feel the need to make that many more to wear them because I already have quite a bit of uh, knitted socks but still it's just so pretty, this pattern. I need to continue working on this. And this is only the first talk and I haven't even finished the cuff, which is ridiculous. This also, again, was using twisted, um, twisted ribbing. Really like that look a lot. But yeah, last little whip, these socks. Then let's get on to 
my short-term knitting plans. First of all, I need to go to the package pickup point because I ordered yarn, finally, to make my mountain sweater. I originally wanted to buy yarn here in a local yarn shop, but I couldn't find the yarn that I wanted. So I decided to go for a yarn option that I already knew I liked and uh, ordered it. And it arrived at a package pickup point already a couple days ago and I just need to come and pick that up. But I am for sure gonna make a separate video about designing this mountain themed Grenoble sweater. So stay tuned for that. And I kind of need to work on that quickly since um, yeah, I have two months left here, so I need to work on that sweater and make sure I finish it before coming home. <laughs> then the second yarn plan, yarn related plan that I have is to really go through all the yarn that I have now, right now in my stash here in France, and try to make sure to really use the most of it. Um, and then maybe I'm gonna donate some yarn here if I'm really not gonna use it anymore which I mean it's kind of sad and I paid for it once for that yarn so I don't want to donate too much but if I really don't have any purpose for it it's better if it gets a new home than taking it with me back to the Netherlands and taking up space in my suitcase uh, basically so that's something I really have to do and then look at projects that I want to make with the yarn that I still have now especially I think for most of it I have dedicated projects for it but not for everything, so I need to work on that. <laughs> and um, it's somewhere at the bottom of my stash again, work on the little frog that I talked about in my knitting plans video a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I need to work on this little frog since I still didn't do that. And it's getting a bit embarrassing at this point that I have still not finished this frog. So that's about it for my knitting podcast and I hope it wasn't too boring for you to watch me ramble about all my projects. Let me know in the comments, of course, what you are working on at the moment, because I always love reading about that. And yeah, keep on knitting, keep on being chaotic. And uh, I, oh, I'm always a bit too ambitious with all my plans and things and whips and whatever I wanna wanna finish. But we'll see how far uh, I'll actually come and how much I'll actually finish in the end. But I hope that you had fun watching this. I will see you again next week or at least in the next video because I'm trying to upload every two weeks at least now. So see you in the next video. Till the time, please stay safe. I love you all a lot. Doei! Smoking.